Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profotech Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning REST API development in PHP using JWT. This is our part 15. Inside this video session guys, we are going to add add user existing checkpoint to our register API. If I back to code editor, now inside last video we had seen that how can we create our users via API. This is the code actually we had written inside last video. We had made one more method inside this class and the method name is something create underscore user and successfully we have called this method inside this file. Simply this method is inserting some data inside our tv underscore users as we had seen also. Back to postman. Now this is the way that actually we had called that API. Now by the, by the help of this API call, we had inserted some data inside our table as we can see here. So let's create some data again back to Postman and let's say that instead of that, I'm going to change something here and let's say here and password is something let's say admin at the rate one two three. So if I press and button, now user has been created as we can see that again back to browser reload this page and as we have one more row inside this table again if we click with the same data means we are not going to change any data either in name email and the password again click on send button again the user has been created back to browser reload this page now we have one more row with the same data we have inserted but this is not correct what we want we want that inside this table email should be unique it means one user has been created with this email then we have to actually restrict that user again for the registration only one single entry of each email should go inside this table so how can we protect that so back to query editor now for that we are going to make a method. That method basically checks that existence of email inside our table. So let's say public function let's say check email and inside this let's say email underscore query let's say select all from let's say from and the table name we have called this and let's say users this is our table so if I copy the table property name pasting it here where let's say where email equal to and this should be the placeholder it means while filling our registration form means registration data we will firstly pass this email address inside this query if it exists then it returns some data otherwise it will be null so if it returns some data we are not going to insert that user inside our table so let's say that now next we have to prepare our query so this connection let's say prepare and inside this we have to pass called email query here and let's say that user underscore obj this is the object that we had return so by the help of this object so let's say that user obj means this is the user object so by the help of this we are going to use called the bind parent function and we are going to attach so the email address we are using inside this placeholder as a string value and this will go inside this and the email property so finally we are going to execute that so let's say if user object so copy this property name and we are going to call the execute method so the query executed successfully in that case let's say data equal to something user obj and we have a method called get underscore result here and finally let's return something data and we are going to use called fetch asoc to convert the data inside associative array if the query is not executed successfully in that case we are going to return a empty array so back to create user api and while calling our api called create user so before that we are going to call our 
check email so back to this class copy this go here and let's say that if user object something the object what we have created user object and had a have a method called check email or without if else block so if I get rid of these things and let's say that email underscore data so what actually we are returning from this we are just storing inside this variable so simply we have to check that if not empty email data it means we have some data here let's say some data we have so in that case inserted insertion should not go inside else block we have to insert that so if I collapse this if block cut all these things and pasting inside this else block go inside if let's make HTTP response code and let's say that here something 404 or let's say 500 internal error and let's echo JSON encode passing an array and let's say status equal to 0 and message something let's say user already accessed try another email address so if we save all these changes back to browser because inside our database already we have two email address accessed so if we delete about the first row and the fourth row delete now successfully we have deleted two rows inside this table now we have two unique rows as with the name of sanjay at gmail.com and ashish at gmail.com now let's say that we are going to insert one more row inside this table so let's say vj and I'm going to change email address something here press send button and user has been created again back to table reload this page now we have one more row entry of one another user again if we click on send button now as we can see that user already accessed try another email address again back to table reload this page now no another extra row with this email is inserted inside this table it's because we have restricted or we have just stopped the duplicate entry inside this table so successfully guys inside this video we had done a single thing about checking email address and if email address not exist then we have done the entry otherwise we have a message call user already accessed so step by step implementing about the simpler things we are learning lots of things inside this rest api development so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day